the song Dos Orugitas is the emotional climax of the film Encanto. As you might expect from the title, translated as Two Caterpillars, Colombian singer Sebastián Yatra sings about two caterpillars that need to go their separate ways in order to reach their full potential as butterflies. It's a beautiful metaphor of change and growth and transformation, but what you might not realize is that the song has a secret musical metaphor in it as well. Even though it's about two caterpillars, the number three is actually the pivotal number that changes the meaning of the song. This is the secret meaning of Dos Orugitas. To understand how Dos Orugitas works, we first have to take a step back and understand how the song was set up to work by composer Lin-Manuel Miranda. When Lin tweeted about my analysis of the Ten Dual Commandments from Hamilton, he used the hashtag chess, not checkers, meaning that his compositions work like thinking five moves ahead in chess, where the brilliance of a particular choice isn't immediately apparent until the pieces align for checkmate. Which means that to understand Dos Oruguitas, we need to talk about the songs that precede it, more specifically, The Family Madrigal and Waiting on a Miracle. For example, Abuela actually sings a little preview of Dos Oruguitas in the opening number, which is in the home key of D flat major, The Family Madrigal. We swear to always help those around us. To be clear, Abuela is singing the Dos Oruguitas melody, but the words are entirely different. They express her need to keep the miracle going, a topic Dos Oruguitas will return to later. Importantly, Abuela is also the one who ends the song abruptly. What are you doing? It feels abrupt because Abuela breaks the music off just as it is about to resolve to D flat major, its home key. In other words, she breaks the song so that it never comes home, foreshadowing Abuela's later realization in Dos Oruguitas that we are broken because of me. But Mirabel isn't interested in placing blame on Abuela. She wants to save the miracle and fix the home. I will save the miracle. In fact, Fixing her home is the subject of Mirabelle's want song, Waiting on a Miracle. I would heal what's broken, so this family something new. But when she sings that line, she is really saying that she hopes to fix herself because she views herself as being broken because she believes she is without a gift. And it's this path she takes to fix herself that ends up fixing the entire family too. And it all begins with the beat of Waiting on a Miracle. which is a bambuco rhythm, a style of music Colombia called bambuco, similar to a waltz in that it is counted in three. The rhythm of that is in three. It's three stringed instruments playing in sort of a waltz time. It's just a different beat. She's literally out of beat with the rest of her family. And this three count is what separates her from the other family members whose music is counted in four. She is literally the odd one out. You might even say Mirabelle marches to the beat of her own drum. But writing a want song in three is something Lynn has actually done before with Nina's want song, Breathe, from In the Heights. And it makes sense because both Nina and Mirabelle love their communities but feel somewhat out of place. The idea of Mirabelle being musically represented by the number three, three is actually introduced before Waiting on a Miracle, though. We actually got a preview of her threeness, her three in the song The Family Madrigal. Even though this song is counted in four, The melody Mirabel is singing here is counted in three. It starts with Abuela and then the other person, you know, the web. And the reason is because Mirabel is dividing each beat into three equal parts, known as a triplet rhythm. It starts with Abuela and then the other person, you know, the web. Now, singing in triplets is great for sounding conversational. In fact, it's so good at creating lyrical flow, the triplet flow has become one of the most popular flows in hip hop heard as early as, but reaching more mass appeal with Migos' song Versace. 
Though Lin was no doubt inspired by hip hop, I would also suggest that he might also be inspired by Sondheim's Merrily We Roll Along. I'm playing Charlie Kringis in Merrily We Roll Along because he starred in a production of it in 2012. And in that show, triplets are used by the characters to talk about their ambitious plans for their careers. Working at Red Bull. I rewrote the ballad. I finished the story. We started rehearsal. But more recently, the triplet rhythm is one reason why Guns and Ships in Hamilton is so invigorating. <laughs> Lafayette breaks out into triplets amid a blazing stream of rap. And if anyone doubts the connection between Lafayette and Mirabelle, Stephanie Beatriz, who's the voice of Mirabelle, settles the question with a Guns N' Ships Family Madrigal mashup. Now, before we move on to talk about the song Dos Origuitas, I want to acknowledge the insane vocal gymnastics of Stephanie Beatriz in The Family Madrigal, where she even managed to deliver a line that Lynn said he imagined for a trumpet. I wrote it as if I were writing a horn line. I knew she could do it because I know how great her voice is. But aside from her now iconic vocal performance as Mirabelle, Stephanie was previously known for her other iconic voice on Brooklyn Nine-Nine. I think it's funny. <laughs> can you go into Rosa mode? Yeah, I can do it right now. <laughs> Which brings me to today's sponsor, Surfshark VPN. Because if you are like me and a huge fan of Detective Rosa Diaz, you will want to stream Brooklyn Nine-Nine all the time. Unfortunately, my Netflix subscription in the US doesn't get Brooklyn Nine-Nine, but luckily I have Surfshark VPN, which allows me to access Netflix content libraries from around the world, including Brooklyn Nine-Nine from Netflix Canada. So now I can get my Rosa Diaz fix anytime I want. Yay! But Surfshark does way more than that. Through encryption, it protects the internet privacy of unlimited devices, so you too can be like Mirabelle and help everyone in your family. And for fans of the channel, you can get Surfshark VPN at surfshark.deals slash Howard Ho. And enter promo code Howard Ho for 83% off. That's right, 83% off and three extra months for free. And bonus, you'll be helping me out if you do that. Help me! All right, back to the video. Mirabelle's want song is in a three count rhythm and in the family madrigal, she sings in triplets. And with that, the chessboard is now set and the pieces in place to understand the brilliance of the number three in Dos Oruguitas. For starters, the song itself is written to sound like a traditional folk tune. I wrote this, um, this song called Dos Oruguitas. That's, I, I wanted to write a folk song that feels like it's always existed. And so it is scored using a traditional Colombian instrument. A Colombian tiple. The tiple, a Colombian 12-string guitar. In fact, this video comes from one of the Encanto directors, Jared Bush, who says this was the night that Lynn and the Encanto crew were in Colombia, where, quote, we fell in love with the tiple. Because of that night, the tiple is all over the Encanto soundtrack. And yes, including in Dos Oruguitas. You can see the tiple in an earlier scene in the film with these musicians in the background. Now, even though there are 12 strings, you'll notice they are grouped together to form only four string bundles or courses as they are called. 12 divided by four means that each one of these courses is made up of exactly three strings. Each note you are hearing from the tiple is actually three strings plucked together, sounding like this one guitar is actually three guitars echoing our theme of three. Three. And it should be no surprise that the song is also structured in three parts, beginning, middle, end, that tell the story of two caterpillars, or oruguitas, Ay, oruguitas, which begin not just with caterpillars, but with little caterpillars, as indicated by the ITA added at the end of the word oruga, meaning that oruguitas is a diminutive form of the original word, implying that these caterpillars might be younger, corresponding to our young lovers. Then in the next section of the song, the caterpillars must separate to form a chrysalis where they cocoon. Chrysalis. Then in the final section of the song, the caterpillars are no longer caterpillars but mariposas, mariposas, butterflies, and must learn to fly off to the future. Which is a perfect metaphor not only for the transformation happening in the family, but also for the specific way that Bruno, who represents the future, follow the butterfly! 
will have to be reintegrated to make that future possible. But we're just scratching the tip of the iceberg of Dos Uruguitas because when you zoom in to the heart of the song, the true meaning of three finally reveals itself. It's just one measure of a descending harp line in a triplet rhythm. And if you're wondering why triplets are being featured so prominently in this melody when so far we've associated it with Mirabelle, well, at the exact moment we hear the triplet descending line, we see this shot. That's right, it's a shot of the triplets, Julieta, Bruno, and Peppa as infants. The entire time Mirabelle was singing in triplets, it was because she wanted to fix the family, to restore the threeness to the family, which meant rehabilitating Bruno back into the family, thus completing the set of triplets. Mirabelle's threeness may have felt odd and out of place, but really it was something that was missing and needed at the heart of this family, until Mirabelle came along and brought it back. If you're thinking that they aren't triplets, well, the film actually confirms it. Earlier, we see Abuela reveal to Pedro that she is having triplets with the paper cutout. And of course, when the three triplets reunite, Agustin says, The triplets are reunite! In a way, each of the triplets represents the structure of the song, past, present, and future. Julieta uses food to heal the wounds of the past. Peppa's control of the weather is temperamental and always very present. And Bruno's visions are of the future. Lynn definitely knew they were triplets as he was involved from the early stages of the film, and I have no doubt, being the chess player that he is, Lynn prepared us for this moment in the most elegant way possible, where Abuela is now a single mother in a strange place, and she sees before her the key to her own future, her triplets, musically scored with triplets. Though we've largely solved the mystery of three, Lin saves one more threeity for the end of the song, his checkmate moment. And it all has to do with the idea of Abuela seeing her own future in these children. In Dos Oruguitas, the final lyric of each chorus is on the words Su propio futuro, which means their own future. And the notes of this melody form an unusual three-note chord. Propio each of these three notes is the exact same distance away from each other, a major third to be exact. It's sometimes heard in pop music such as the Beatles song, Oh Darling. Oh, darling. The unsettling quality of these three notes also made it perfect for the Fire Nation theme from Avatar. But the fact that these three equal notes come right on the phrase, their own future, is important because it exactly expresses the future. Just as each child of these triplets are equally important to the family's future, so too are these three notes equally important. They're equally far away from each other, which means none of these notes are more important than the other. To put this in context, most chords do favor one note over another. Dos Orguitas is in the key of C major and C major is called C major because the note C is the important one being supported in some way by the other notes. But in this chord from Dos Oruguitas, also known as an augmented chord, each note is equal and so this chord is technically not in any single key. And you can hear that by the multiple ways that I can resolve this augmented chord. I can resolve it to A, or to D flat, or to F. An augmented chord is more like a nexus point that is branching out to multiple timelines that can go to whatever future they want. So this augmented chord perfectly describes a future that is not yet written. The problem is that Bruno did seem to write the future, which is why Abuela had rejected him for fear that his predictions would come to pass. But what Abuela didn't realize... The future was undecided was that Bruno's predictions were not predictions, but warnings of what would happen if generational trauma was not dealt with. And so it's in the song Dos Oruguitas that we see Abuela finally sharing how it felt to be displaced by war, to lose her husband, and to raise triplets all on her own. Abuela finally releases her feelings about this painful past to Mirabel, who was gifted all along with the powers of empathy and being able to open people's eyes to who they really are. Open your eyes, open your eyes. 
Abuela realizes that her fear of losing everything again has made her rigid, controlling, and ultimately hurtful. That rather than predetermining someone's life through categorizing them by their gifts, each person is like an augmented chord with the potential to go almost anywhere they want to go. That's why the song ends on this augmented chord with no resolution. Okay, in the album version, we do get resolution. It ends on a C major chord to bring us back home. But in the film, the line is sung over this augmented chord and the chord never resolves, but instead hangs in the air, as if Abuela has finally come to peace with the idea of letting her family determine their own futures. Because it's at this very moment of this lingering augmented chord that Bruno bursts on screen, this character who symbolizes the future, and the first thing Abuela does is embrace Bruno. And by doing so, not just embraces him, but also the uncertainty of the future as well, allowing her family to fly into the future. With perhaps a new queen on the board. I'd like to thank Marta Portillo, who was a professional Spanish language interpreter who gave me a greater understanding of the lyrics. Thank you also to my patrons on Patreon, including my newest patrons, Nathaniel Callahan, Doug Wyatt, Kieran O'Halen, Michael Lanham, Farouk Atesh, and Stephen Lansing. I'm planning more Encanto and musical theater videos as we speak, so please subscribe and stay tuned. Peace.